What's up my friends? Welcome back. You're watching Harv Video Audio Stuff and in this video I'm going to go over five important videography lessons that I've learned over the years that I know are going to help you. I'm not talking about how to use gear or how to expose footage for certain situations. I'm talking about hard lessons learned. Just one quick bit of housekeeping before I dive in. These videos are powered by my Patreon backers. The idea being it's a non-profit thing and any funds from Patreon, I'll buy equipment and then review them and give it away to you once I've finished. It's just a really elegant way of bringing better content to you, which I hope is okay already. Plus, you get the opportunity to win some amazing gear. And if this video helps you at all, consider having a look. If not, don't worry. Let's dive in. Tip one is to prepare a shot list and always shoot more footage than you think you need to. Now this might seem like a pretty obvious one, but when you find yourself in that situation, and all of us do at some point, the sinking feeling you get when you realise you needed more footage is horrible, and I don't want you to go through that. This happened to me once when I was shooting a music video and we were going around different locations, getting different sections of the song, and it wasn't until editing when I realised that I didn't have quite enough of the very end of the song. and. It's a brutal thing to happen. So stick to your shot list, tick them off as you go. I use the Notes app on my iPhone. And then when you have that thought of, hmm, that'll do, that's the time to get just a little more footage. Tip two is that good quality lighting and audio should really be prioritized over getting the fanciest camera with the fanciest lens that shoots the highest resolutions. I get lots of questions from people saying, I've got a budget of X. I want to get my footage looking really cool and cinematic. What camera slash lens should I buy? When I reply, usually my first question is, what kind of lighting are you using? And more often than not, the answer is, I don't have any. Or, I use a small LED panel. Of course, to that I respond, take all of that budget and spend it on quality lights and don't skimp on diffusion. Spend a third of the cash on diffusion if you have to, as this will make a far bigger difference than a fancy lens. The same thing goes for vloggers. I get tons of questions from vloggers asking what lens they should buy to make their video look better. And of course my answer is, improve your audio first. Keep your current setup, stop using the built-in mic on your camera, spend some of your budget on a microphone and just see how people respond to the change in quality of your content. Tip three is to frame your shots just slightly wider than you think you need to. Now, why would I say that? Well, the reason for this is flexibility. This gives you options and more flexibility in editing. You may decide you want to crop your frame, stabilize your footage, which inevitably also results in a crop. You may also want to add widescreen bars, although really it's best to have decided beforehand, but you never know. You may even want to reframe for other formats like socials viewed on phones. I'm not suggesting you shoot at 16 millimeters instead of 50, just subtle, like, 30 instead of 35, or just take a mini step back. Tip four is to double record your audio. Always have a backup because the feeling you get when you realize that your main audio is either missing or somehow unusable, that feeling is just horrible. Now this actually happened to me the other day. I was filming some content for this channel and for some reason my main audio, which I, I have a microphone just here, just stopped. No reason for it, just stopped. But it was all good, because I had my backup. Here's that clip. If you want to know what lookup tables are, I've done an interesting and fun video, which I will link up here and down below. Large gamuts are also essential for shooting HDR content. The one that people tend to go to is BT2020, but S Gamut 3 Cine is also compatible if you're... One bit of kit that I've found so valuable over the years is my trusty Tascam DR40. Now this is not a sexy bit of kit by any means, but it's got XLR inputs so you can record professional microphones. Even the inbuilt mics sound really good. So when I'm doing, say, an interview setup, Here's how it goes. In this setup, we are dual recording audio. So I have a Rode Wireless Go here and a microphone above, so that way we can't go wrong. Tip five is to stress the importance of having a good external monitor instead of going out and buying lots of other fancy gear. I've said it before, but when you're using a large display, you can see your image so clearly, and when your images look so good on it, it's just inspiring. I would go as far to say that having a good monitor will improve your footage, because 
The better you can see what you're doing, the easier it is to nail your framing, your exposure and your focus. The very best rear camera screens that I've seen have been probably from Canon and Panasonic, you tell me if you think differently, but that's just my opinion and even then they don't compare in any way to a good external monitor. So often I get questions about how to expose different modes using the Sony cameras and the questions are usually, so I expose so that the exposure meter shows plus one stops, right? And that's a real hand to face moment because A, how on earth can I know the answer to that? I'm not there. B, why on earth are you using the exposure meter which tells you so little about the exposure information in your scene? And C, this tells me that you're probably not using an external monitor which has, in my opinion, the very best tool for exposure which is waveforms. Anyway, rant over, buy an external monitor, that's sage advice. So it's time to recap and take everything we've learned in this video and pop it in a doggy bag for you to take away. Firstly, prepare a shot list and shoot more than you think you need to. Essentially, I'm saying fail to prepare and you prepare to fail. Prioritize lighting and audio over other fancy gear. Overall, these will make a bigger difference to the quality of your video. Frame your shots ever so slightly wider for extra flexibility in editing. You can thank me later, that's a good one. Double record your audio. I never want you to go through having that horrible feeling of realizing you don't have the main audio track. Finally, we have the importance of using an external monitor with all of the right exposure tools your camera doesn't have. Your footage will thank you. That's it for now. I just hope you found this interesting and helpful. After all, that's always the goal of these videos. I wanna hear from you. Do you have any videography pearls of wisdom you can pop down below and let's all load it up so it becomes kind of like a treasure trove of tips down there. Let's do it. I've got a large archive of videos about videography on this channel of which YouTube has picked this video for you and the one below is my most recent upload. Until next time, let's help each other out and shoot better video. See you guys.